Welcome back to my garage. There's this is the third or fourth time I'm I'm doing the intro. As of now, I'm not sure how messy the video is. If it's just a complete disaster of uh, incoherence. I had a slight incident of the like a flashback of the mental stuff again and uh, got kind of incapacitated. Never mind. I'm uh, not quite sure where to begin. I've been doing uh, lots of thinking and um, thinking and um, and thinking, thinking about fueling and what to do about fueling. Why am I thinking about fueling? 50% nitro. We're talking maybe two, 2.5 to one, even two to one, even richer. You want to run rich to to fend off the pre-ignition pre-igniness of um, of methanol and nitromethane. Detonation also, but mostly pre-ignition. This means you'll have to pump in like six times the amount of fuel and that gets progressively worse upping the nitro ratio. And as we're at Bonneville running a fuel, unrestricted fuel class, we could run pure nitro and that would give us an advantage over 50-50, you know. Just a little disclaimer before we start talking about this. My uh, super conventional two-stroke cylinder and case, rope revalve normal case, is uh, it's going to be cast, I think, t in two weeks now at Salevatech. I'm going to travel down and meet up with Jan Schaeffer long tuning and we're going to do a little road trip and, uh, and do some filming at Salevatech, the casting and all that stuff. So that's awesome. And uh, so all the... The fueling thing will be kept separate from until it's been tested on a separate, not not experimentally in any other way than the fuel system testing engine. And uh, then, if successful, it'll be transferred over to to the actual engine. So, quite a different approach to what I'm used to doing. <laughs> Probably better. The easiest solution would just be to run a normal float carb. Make sure there's enough flow through the through the the float needle. Make sure there's large enough jets. Make sure all the passages are big enough for for the like six times more fuel. And that's possible. The problem is the passage becomes so large unless we mount like a bunch of extra power jets. Every passage becomes so large and. Uh, Fuel atomization is uh, compromised a lot. The problem is you can pour in so much fuel and so much of it does not contribute to combustion. It just passes through the engine or, or stays behind in the crankcase. So we need a way to properly atomize the large amount of fuel mixed in with the air. Something I've been uh, playing with before. If you might remember like five, four or five years ago talking about continuous uh, fuel injection into um, a resonant intake and having uh, using these water injection jets and having that turn on at uh, you gotta remember I'm running uh, we'll come to the variator stuff I'm running uh, this is a land speed bike and it's variated and uh, so all I care about is being able to having it somewhat idle being able to pull it from early in the power band into peak power RPM and then, then it'll just stay at, that's how it should work, stay at peak power RPM for like five kilometers and then shut off. But for testing purposes, I've got this throttle body with TPS and the butterfly. It's meant for these normal injectors. So the reason for not going like normal EFI is because it is so hard to make that work because of the post nature of these. Which means they don't deliver fuel all the time. Which means all the air entering the crankcase won't have fuel in it. Which means there will be pockets of super lean, like super lean pockets and super rich pockets in the crankcase. And uh, the cylinder will get like, it, the, the lean and rich pockets will be sucked in at different times. So you'll have cycles of lean and cycles of rich mixture, not good for power. 
like the average of those cycles will be much less powerful than if you had a, a humongous, humongous, a humongous, but also homogeneous charge in there. So every cycle would get a nice, good mixture. Not one lean, one rich, maybe two lean, then three rich, you know. We want super high pressure and we really would want a, a pump that delivered the same amount of fuel for every revolution of that pump because that would be really easy to well really easier to control. So I started trying to find a, a small hydraulic pump that I could use for my purpose, electronically controlled, not having it driven by the crank, but having it electronically controlled because then I could uh, vary the speed and have it not be dependent of RPM and maybe not have to run a barrel valve which is used on mechanical injection and that barrel valve kind of it's kind of a, a variable orifice where and it decides kind decides the fueling dependent on the throttle opening and then the speed of the engine um, the pump pumps more and more fuel with engine speed and uh, the barrel valve decides how much of that or how large the, how much of that fuel is allowed through depending on throttle position that was a bad explanation google mechanical fuel injection top fuel or something and you'll uh, get a good explanation um, i'm going to use kind of that system but i'm hoping to not have to uh, to have a barrel valve because i found some uh, i found those small hydraulic pumps there's actually a market for um, tiny RC hydraulic pumps used in like excavators and and like cranes and stuff like that and I found one that should be able to push about a liter a minute and achieve pressures of like 80 bars so we should get really fine fuel mist with a system like that and it's ordered should be a couple of weeks before it's here I'm glad I'm not working with cars. As is typical with these uh, bikes around here, it's had a rough life. Been cared for by uh, by some uh, careless 16-year-old, probably. And now it'll get even worse. <laughs> the plan is to use this bike as a test bench for. Uh, for stupid ideas and leave the leave those stupid ideas separate from the main new engine build until they're converted into not stupid ideas anymore so no experimental stuff on the main engine until it's not experimental anymore i got this from my neighbor for a good price and it didn't start but they told me it did run like two years ago or longer so the plan now is to just uh well, see, see if there's spark, see if there's uh, like there's stuff here that might be a problem, like this thing, a relay for for something. Make it run, and we'll we'll have to tear it apart and take measurements because I'm gonna. I've already created a a fuel curve in Engmod for for my uh, for for my engine for the PIP2 engine, and um, and we'll have to do this for this. Too. So we have to create a model of this engine in Engmod, which might be interesting. Uh, we'll have to take things apart and measure volumes and stuff. and Because um, we need that to have a baseline to work from. How much fuel do we need at various RPMs and various loads and stuff. There should be some fresh ish fuel in here it wasn't me putting that fuel in there so who knows
an older spark, at least with that older spark plug. The filter didn't like the starting fluid. <laughs> Almost. Well, it turns out the intake is uh, like rotted in half and uh, there's uh, evidence of uh, water ingress here. I think we're, uh, I think just tear the engine apart and, uh, and fix it. And um, I haven't got a, a derby intake. I, th I thought I had, but I can't find I can't find one. It is actually a 50 kit. Arsel, extremely poorly matched to the to the derby engine like if you look at the transfers here and then look at this <laughs> it did like it's so funny how they the casting is like this part of the casting the outside of the casting is okay and then the like there's no match here which is weird there's a bunch of crap in here that is the flattest o-ring i've ever seen I think they ran this without water. Well, without enough water, because this seems to be extremely overheated. The seal is put in wrong way around and also completely skewed <laughs> so good thing we just started to pull this apart <laughs> they, they told me it ran really well their definition of really well is probably a little bit different from mine I torqued the bolts good <laughs> I'm surprised none of them are stripped it also looks like Whoever built this, instead of cleaning it, they painted it, like painted over the dirt. Here, even inside the reed cavity. <laughs> Good stuff. And the shifter shaft is, of course, bent. <laughs> so that's why it's hard to get it out of there. home stretch just fitting the cylinder and reed valve and we're done but I I discovered something really strange this piston actually doesn't fit at all 39.93 but I'm pretty sure it's much wider yeah 40.2 there's like a oh Wish I caught that earlier. This edge has been pushed out. I don't think I can blame the moped kids for this. I think this was my fault. I think what happened was when I was uh, disassembling, I think this got hooked up on the case, kind of like this, while I was 
like pulling the crank out of the case halves. Well, so guess I'm a moped kid too. <laughs> Stupid Norwegian moped kid. New piston has arrived and this one fits the cylinder. Zero point five, perfect. I'm not gonna reuse the the old ignition because it's not programmable, and I need a programmable ignition. And especially in this case, uh, I need the RPM output of a programmable ignition. And also, I think we can use. I'll talk about that later. What more we can use in the Ignitec uh, Ignitec ignition system. Now it's just a matter of uh, creating a, a mount for this. Something like this. I'll drill a hole and uh, we'll see how it fits. We gotta set the trigger wheel at 30 degrees before top dead center so that we can use that as a baseline. I rotated the engine past top dead center with this down in the plug hole and then I zeroed and then I dialed in 3.24 millimeters and locked it. So that's 30 degrees before top dead center and now I'm gonna use this as a piston stop. Make sure to hold it parallel to the bore then I'll rotate the crank until the piston hits my stop. There. Just wanted to see it on the taper. So that's seated. Okay. And then check if it's lit. And it touches there. So perfect. All we need to do now is hook up the Ignitec and put the fuel tank besides the bike and start it up. And um, and tune the carb for gas. Then we'll start testing with the nitromethane injection into a normal carb running either gas or, or methanol. And I've 3D printed this nozzle thing. And I've got a EFI pump down there. And I've also got this pump, which is an external gear pump just arrived from China. The first thing we're going to test is the pure nitromethane injection. Of course, I can't. I can't test with pure nitromethane here in Norway, so I have this container of uh, of water, and we're going to use that for testing purposes. When we know it's running right, we'll take the cylinder off. We'll take some measurements and um, and create a, a model in Engmod, simulate the engine, um, and get a fuel curve, a starting point, and then we'll start playing with the methanol and nitromethane injection setup. Thanks for watching and hopefully next time will be less of a mess. <laughs> See you next time.